attention. He AI stopped. art has been getting exponentially better this year. And no, it has Understandably, been. a lot of you, I'm sure, are worried about it. I've been following its development and its impact on the art community that I love very closely over the last year. And finally, I felt like it was time to make a video about it. AI art, for those of you who are hearing this term for the first time, is basically art made by prompt-based image generators, such as mm -hmm. Midjourney, Lensa AI, and Stable Diffusion, to name only a few. And while this might sound cool, it's led to displays like this on ArtStation. Oh, wow. People are mad. Clearly, the art community is not happy. So... I mean, I will also say that art is not just for the art community. So if the art community is not happy with art, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Like art exists for everybody, not just the art community. What gives? Let me try to explain why. Now, these image generators can be used by anyone, artists mm -hmm. or not. All you have to do is request an image using a few words and the AI will do its best to deliver that image. Real quick too, AIs improve over time and they've gotten really good at generating beautiful images. Especially the quality of, girls. of the art has been improving quickly and the prompts to generate these images are getting simpler and simpler. Mm -hmm. It's already at a point where it could be described as too easy. It might sound great at first, an actual real like make art button like we've always joked about. But when something seems too good to be true, there's usually more to the story. It's certainly the case here. How the AI is able to do this in the first place is really at the core of most of the problems now. So let's start with the biggest issue, how these AI- I think that with the AI art, what's gonna end up happening is that the people that are more artistically inclined are going to be able to develop it in the best way. In the same way that obviously anybody can use Photoshop, but just because somebody who's very skilled with Photoshop can make something look photorealistic and it not be real doesn't mean that anybody can do that guys we're trained to do what they do ais just like dogs need a lot of training to mm -hmm. learn to do new tricks way more training than dogs actually i'm simplifying this a lot but basically the ai learns and improves by example you show it examples of art that you wanted to reproduce text descriptions yeah, a sure. ton of it and guide it as to what is desirable and what isn't. Over many iterations, it gets good at recreating beautiful art, just like a pet learns to more accurately follow commands as you repeat them over and over. Mm -hmm. AIs only develop at an acceptable pace if they have a lot of examples though, as in billions of examples. The database called the Lion 5B database, on which most of these AIs were trained, contains 5.8 billion text and image data scraped from the internet. Oh and my god. Image. And in this case, the vast majority of all the art that was used to train these AIs were taken without permission by unscrupulous programmers yeah. from artists all around the world without their consent right. and without compensation taken from you and me. I'm not going to say it's art theft, but it sure smells like art theft to me. In my mind, just... I think that that definitely is in some regard, but I, I feel like a lot of the conversations that people are having around whether AI art is art theft or not, are like there's so much circumstantially around like the United States version of copyright law. And the truth is that the rest of the world does not operate under that policy. The rest of the world doesn't care about like, oh, well, the, the, you know, the U.S. does it this way, so we have to do it this way. We have to, you know, respect you know, their rules. Why does somebody in, in China have to respect the laws in the United States? Well, I don't think that they should have to. Because if you think that they should, then do you think that we should have to respect their laws? Because I certainly fucking don't. So it's like the moment that you actually apply this in any sort of a real way, it immediately falls apart. It's like that of a huge segment of the art community. This is the main issue with AI generators. Had it been trained mm -hmm. on voluntarily submitted or paid art or public domain art like it should have been. AI art would likely suck so bad compared to what it is now that nobody would pay serious attention to it. It would never be considered mm -hmm. as more of a tool in some specific applications. In I, I don't really think that's entirely true because I think that AI art that did well, like so for example, 
um, like the Corridor crew, the way that they developed their AI art like anime was that they created AI art and then they trained the AI with AI art to further refine the AI art. So that would clearly be what would happen because it would, ju it would just be a more guided process to the same goal. Instead, it got good fast off the backs of unknowing artists and now these... Uh, no, they use Vampire Hunter D. No, no. See, I, I understand that. But the other thing that they did, they did both. Like, what was transformative about what they did, different than what other people had done with AI art anime, was that... Oh, oh, what the, the difference was that they took the AI art and then they fed it into different AI systems and then they fed it back into each other. Like how they used one AI program to remove, uh, you know, the like more uh, derivative, the more extreme scenes that were not the same as all of the other ones. And then they used another AI tool to remove all types of like shading, for example. So I, I do think it's actually, I'm not talking about that part. I'm just talking about the other part. Companies are raking in tons of cash, selling their AI services to everyone mm -hmm. they can. I'll admit though, it's crazy impressive. As oh yeah. technology, it's uh, We've seen that Kind one. of similar to cloning people. It's crazy Ooh. what we're capable of. I That's can see exciting. many valid ways this could be integrated mm -hmm. in artist workflows, but I'll get to that later. As it is now, and until they retrain their AIs from scratch using only voluntary submissions and public domain images, using mid-journey or stable diffusion is the equivalent of shopping at a used car shop where you know that all the inventory was likely built from stolen car parts. Car parts stolen from your neighbor. Um, I don't think that works because, and, and this is always the problem whenever people make arguments around intellectual property and then compare them to traditional theft, is that there, scarcity exists in the real world. Like there can only so many, there can only be so many carburetors. If I have a carburetor, then you don't have a carburetor because I took your carburetor. But in a world where you can duplicate something with no scarcity whatsoever, which is the world that what we're talking about, would that be a problem? So I, I think that, again, it's just a bad method of argumentation to use a real life example because all real life matter exists. It is scarce by nature of the fact that it exists. But AI art fundamentally does, and art and the idea of it and the picture like a, an, an image, right? Like this is why NFTs don't have any value is because there's nothing that's intrinsically value about, uh, valuable about them. First car. From a moral standpoint, everything about this is wrong in my opinion. Now, I want to take some time to go over five of the more common arguments mm -hmm. that I've heard either for or against AI art okay. and offer hopefully a better perspective. All then right, again, let's hear it. I'm just some bald professional artist guy teaching art on YouTube. So um, all of this is just my opinion and I'm happy to read your comments and hear you out if you think differently. Okay. I'm personally not against the technology. I welcome it, but I'm against the way that it was implemented and the negative impact that it could have on current and future generations of artists if you don't come together and set some boundaries. I'm sure everyone agrees that cloning people is a cool technology, yeah. but it's been made illegal because of its potential potential negative consequences on humanity. I place AI art in a similar category. So the first thing... Um, cloning people and the negative effects it would have on society. What about cloning organs? Like, for example, like if you were able to clone a person's heart and you were able to make a perfect one-to-one -one clone of a person's heart and you could save somebody's life with that or you were able to clone uh, blood, for example. Uh, this would be almost impossible to do, but things that were impossible 50 years ago, 100 years ago are commonplace now. So who knows where things are going to go? Uh, I, I think that you know cloning an organ, we would all probably agree is a good thing. Uh, is there anybody who would disagree with this? Like if, if you were cloning a person's organ to save a person's life, uh, absolutely this is good. So I, I think that even in the cloning conversation, it, it's it's extremely nuanced. On the list is what makes me the saddest. When I hear some of you saying that they're giving up on art because AI art is too mm -hmm. good, that it's much better than you'll ever be. So there's no point in practicing or aiming to be an artist. I don't think anyone should think this way because even without AI, that's 
always been the case. Yeah, I, I think that's true too. I mean, like a good example of this is OnlyFans. You can type big boob into Google and get 2 billion result, but people still subscribe to girls only fans because it has a personal touch. And I think that uh, human made art is always going to have that re that appeal in that regard. And as there's a bigger difference between AI art and human art and AI art becomes more commonplace, the novelty of human art will become more valuable. There's always going to be someone who's better than you. That's what makes art so fascinating. That's true. We keep getting better at it. There's always someone we can learn from, however good we get. We all pursue art for the joy of it, despite, you know, all the pains and the failure. There's no better feeling than getting better at something and noticing growth within ourselves. We use art to express ourselves as conscious beings to connect with others. Art is nothing without that human connection that it enables. And before I continue with the rest of the list, I just want to take a second and mention the massive Christmas sale I have going on in my store on all of my courses. I love how more content creators are doing this. They're having ads in their videos, but it's their own stuff. This is such a good thing, and I'm glad to see, like, the content creator economy evolving to this level. And, and like, obviously, you have people that will take traditional sponsorships, too, and that's fine. But I think that it's much more uh, healthy whenever you see somebody like this who's, you know, obviously, they have their own thing that they're selling. And, like, this is much more healthy long term for them as, like, a career. I think this is a very good thing to see. Including, of course, the Art School for Digital Artists program that will be running until the end of the month only. Like with previous years, it's the biggest discount of the year. I hope it helps you pick up something that you might have had your eyes on. Happy holidays. Uh -huh. Now back to the video. The next argument against AI is that it'll take all the art jobs, that it's too fast to compete against. Therefore, there's no future for artists. No point in pursuing art as a career anymore. And I couldn't disagree more. I, I disagree with that too. I think that's not true. If you look at, for example, how industrialization changed farming, it definitely probably means that there are less people in agriculture now than there were in 1810. However, there are still people that are farmers. There are still people that continue doing this. It's just that the way that they achieve that, that result and the way that they do their job is a lot different now than it used to be back then. Studios won't replace artists. They'll likely use AI as a new tool within their pipeline. But I think a lot of you don't realize that humans are much better at certain things and will always be. Concept I don't think, I don't agree with that. Uh, I don't, I, I feel like humans are always better at certain things and will always be no i don't think so art is a good example sure it takes time to render out a full concept with colors shading. i i feel like it, it's it's odd to see an argument like this whenever the video the premise of the video is that ai art is growing at an exponential rate but somehow there's a certainty that it's never going to exceed human limits and human ingenuity when I think the most ironic thing about AI art being the, co being the conversation point is that art was one of the things that people would always say, maybe 20 years ago, would not be replaced with AI. Being light and materials, but that's not quite what concept artists do. Concept artists need to iterate quickly based on mm -hmm. a specific need for the project that they're on. They need to consider all the art, the story, and the mechanics of the project, and then create concepts that fit within all those parameters. Whipping out a quick concept is a relatively quick task for concept artists. Same goes when it sure. comes to modifying a design. Concept art has never Take been a bottleneck in a production, so there's no problem to solve here. No use for AI. The next argument is that AI learns to create images just like we do. We use references from life or other artists, so yes. why can't AI do it too? Well, AI doesn't create art like we do, not even close. AI art is a combination of a series of words or a, you know, a prompt, a series of words, the resulting image, and a seed number. These three things together result in the image being generated. It's a recipe to create a particular image. If you use the same prompt and seed number, you'll be able to generate the exact same image again. Apparently, you can also reverse engineer this process and find the prompt if you have the seed number and the resulting image. Uh -huh. It's just a mindless collage of pixels based on probabilities. Its limit will always be what it was trained on. It can never innovate. It can never create new styles, raise the overall... I don't think that's true. I think that's true right now. That's definitely true right now. 
And I would even say people are saying right now that's not true. So it becomes evident that it will become less true over time, which makes sense. And also, I don't really know if, like, the outcome is really, like, a lot of people have a different artistic process. Is, is, it, is it true that one artistic process is fundamentally worse or better than another? And I think that if you asked a lot of artists this question, they would probably tell you no, unless it's like tracing, for example. And you can use the example that AI art is in a different, like more abstract way, it's tracing. But I don't think it's tracing in the same way that tracing is tracing. It's, it's not directly tracing. So like, I, I just, I don't see the, the strategy of how the art is created for being the problem. A level of art, only humans can do that. We're conscious beings and we all see things differently mm -hmm. based on our experience and our emotions. We can yeah. and always do evolve. Just look at the way that art has changed over the centuries. If we stopped creating new art to leave it up to AI, progress would stop as well. Art in 100 years in the future would be no different than it is today. And so saying AI art learns and creates the same way that we do is just... I think this is partially true. So like I, I disagree on it uh, on this that like this is a a universal truth, but I think that it will always be partially true. Profoundly not true, and we can't be compared that way. Now the next argument in favor of AI is that it's inevitably going to progress and be able to mm -hmm. basically replace us. Therefore, we should fully embrace it and learn to adapt to it. I'd say this way of thinking is only right if we keep the technology as a tool. Just like Photoshop has content aware tools that let you work faster. Left out of control though, it has the potential to do too much damage. Damage that we might not even consider yet. I mentioned cloning earlier. Genetic engineering mm -hmm. of humans to create designer babies is another example. Just because it's possible, just because the technology exists, doesn't mean we should use it. I'm sure you- Well, don't people make designer babies? Like, I, I don't know if that's really a thing entirely, but I'm fairly certain that there is a an element of that that happens already. Like, it, it, it's just a very, very small amount. You can, think of you can choose eye and hair color? Yeah. Many things that can lead to a good outcome for some, but are made illegal to maintain fairness for everyone. Mm -hmm. AI shouldn't be illegal, but its use should be heavily regulated in art and every other industry. Just embracing it regardless of the consequences is like telling the banks that they can do whatever they want with customer funds. The reason they can't is not for a lack of trying. Well, it, I, I think that again, if you make the argument with like customer funds and things like that, money is, and, and I know this becomes a very... <laughs> Uh, a very flimsy argument because a fiat currency, but money is representative of something that is finite. Like fundamentally data is an I data and ideas are not finite. It's because there are regulations in place, regulations that benefit the overall population. The next argument against AI generated <laughs> art is more of an open question, I guess. How valuable is art when the author has no name. Writing the prompt for the image doesn't make you the artist, obviously. Just the client, as if you asked an artist to draw you a commission. You uh -huh. just ask the AI and the AI did it for you. Now, right. there's a big problem when people start uploading AI-generated art as their own. It's not much different than uploading someone else's art as your own. <sighs> this is interesting. Because, like, I I'm not sure about this. Like, for example, people often have uh, photography that has been, like, very, mi like, minorly altered. Like, there are a lot of people who do photography and they change the saturation on their photos or something similar to that. So I think that we already have an example of people that are using something that is a foundation and then building on it based off of effectively machine learning which is saturation and things like that on Photoshop. That's way different. How is it different? Nowhere near the same. Okay, how's it different? Yeah, well, what's the, uh, how, how's it different?
It's a manual editing process, post-production. It's not automatic. Um, I, I don't know about that. I think that it, there's a mixture of it. So, for example, like it is automatic to an extent. Like Photoshop, like what's the best way to say this? I, I, I've never I've never thought about this, so I'm not like really I, I don't know what words to use. Uh, Photoshop is programmed to identify which pixels to lighten and which which pixels to darken on a photo. Like it that that is to a degree machine learning. And it's not like you are not choosing each pixel to lighten and each pixel to darken. Like these filters are effectively tools that are programmed in that do not function the exact same as uh as AI art. Of course not. But I think that they're similar in the way that it is basically the user telling the machine to apply this to a to a picture and then change it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure. I'm wrong on that. They work on a procedural basis. Yeah. Uh, programming a function is not the same as machine learning. Well, I, I would say that functionally it is very similar. In my, in my mind, I think that they are similar because both of them are not an action that's taken deliberately by the user on an individual level. Like they are not really taking the action to change the, uh, to change the saturation. They're just clicking a button and then making it occur. And I'm not saying it's a one-to-one -one comparison. I'm saying that it's something that's similar. Like, we're never going to have a one-to-one -one comparison for something like this because it's just everything's always new. But I think that it is similar. If nobody should do this with human-made art, well, the same should go with AI art. Then I would ask, what good are these fully AI-generated images if nobody can claim them as their own? Useless is what they are. Unless you're into fraud and try to scam people by... Um, is AI art useless... I, I think that's very, I, I don't agree with this either. I, I don't think this is true because I think that if you look at it from that perspective, that's a very, that, that is a perspective that is, this is going to sound like very communist, right? But it's a perspective that's, that's, that's rooted in, in capitalism. What he's saying is that why does this have any value unless somebody can make money off of it? And I think that there are things that have intrinsic value that transcends money. Like there are a lot of things that have value and it doesn't have like a monetary value. You can't really sell this, but people have a lot of people think it it's worth something. Like butter? No, butter. I, I don't think butter is a good example. Fooling them into thinking that you did it, but that has never been acceptable and it should never be. Now, yeah, I yeah. Again, like worth is subjective. So, like for one person, uh, I mean, like look at Atrioc. Apparently, AI art does have value. It's just that simple. I think it should be fine to use AI created images as part of the art process, as a tool, like I've said, just like someone using photo bashing to create a final concept, mm -hmm. but never as the final result itself. For this last part of the video, I want to touch on the pros of AI art and what I think it will become in the future. Overall, like many, I think AI has a huge potential to help speed up some parts of our workflow as artists and generate a lot of interesting ideas as a brainstorming tool. Tools that bring value, mm -hmm. tools that help us artists speed up our process and eliminate pains in our workflow should always, always be celebrated. The problem so far with AI art is that it's been used as the final product rather than as a tool. It's been seemingly trying to eliminate the entire process of creating art in some cases, solving a non-existent problem. Creating art is fun. It's fulfilling. Well, I, I do think I don't think that it's a non-existent problem because a lot of people would like to make art, but they don't have the tools to do it. So the problem for them is they want to be able to do something, but they can't do it. So it makes it easier for them. Why would anyone try to automate the joy out of it? And I'll end with some quick suggestions or guidelines for artists when dealing with AI art. Hopefully guidelines that the large portfolio websites uh, a good a good comparison to this how it uh, how I I 
I would compare it as like with a calculator. Like there are people that can do pen and pencil, pen and paper math, absolutely. But if you use a calculator, it would be faster. Well, here and implement instead of focusing only on maximizing profits for the next quarter. First one, when sharing art online, just like when sharing studies of other people's art or when tracing an image or when the result is heavily inspired by the style of somebody else, so do music, the right yeah, thing. I would say so too. It. In this case, this close, it was done using AI art. Easy. Next, when it comes to fully AI generated images, these should have no place on any portfolio websites. And third one, those same AI generated images. Uh, no place on portfolio websites. Um... Let me think. Oh. That's shameless as hell. What do you mean? It's not your own creative skills. It's not about having creative skills. It's about creating an output that people want. Being creative and having skills are not integral to the process. The process is generating an outcome that people will give you money for. Being creative or being skilled is only a means to an end for that to happen. The, the only thing that pe people are not paying you because you are creative or skilled, people are paying you because you create an outcome that is valuable to them. You can be as creative and, subs and as skilled as you want, but the outcome, if the outcome is not what they want, then it doesn't matter. So, that's not what an artist is. This isn't a solid argument. What does it matter? Like, how, how do you define what an artist is? So, is, it, is an artist a person who, like, I, 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 almost, I think that in almost all regards, so you could use something that's like a little bit, I, I don't, I've never thought this argument out, so this could be a bad argument. But like you could look at something like Andy Warhol, okay? Andy Warhol painted different versions of soup cans. This is not really revolutionary, is it? This is not a crazy fucking new idea that nobody can do. But he did that. And people got value out of that. And I'll also use another example of Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock threw paint on a fucking page. And you know what? That paint on that fucking page is worth... 26 million dollars isn't that crazy so it, it it's and, and what i'm saying here is that there are a lot of people who would use the argument that like something like a jackson pollock or something like that is like like oh this isn't art and i see this all the time where people are criticizing modern art and saying this isn't real art the only real art are you know like renaissance paintings and greek statues so, like, who has the authority to say what is and isn't art? Because I think that art fundamentally is subjective, and it's a, it's a subjective experience. It's a subjective expression of the human experience, which is also, again, very interesting question. If it's a subjective experience, a, a, sub, a subjective expression of the human experience, then how the fuck does AI art count as that? But it, I, I don't know. It, it, it's very complex. It doesn't, but like you could say, like if I was going to make the argument that it does, I would say that a human made the, uh, the fucking, a human made the, the algorithm that made the painting. The human did the inputs that made it happen. And because of that, it, it was created by humans. So I don't think it's as simple as no or yes. But I do think that like with it, it does AI art have no place in somebody's portfolio. I think that absolutely what anybody could agree with is that AI art has no place in somebody's portfolio if they're saying it's not AI art. Like that, like lying about it I think is bullshit. Uh, because it, it's disingenuous. But to say that it has no place, 
I, I don't know if I agree with that entirely. It should be explicitly stated. Yeah. You're missing the point entirely. Art comes from the soul. It's something you're creating out of nothing. Well, it's not, though. Like, for example, like, uh, like photography is fundamentally... Like you would you would categorize photography as art. I think a lot of people would categorize photography as art. But photography is not something that comes out of the soul. It is a literal photographic image that has been generated from real life. So I think that an example of photography is just like that just immediately falls apart. Let's see here. Just fucking clown. Art comes from the soul. Uh, no place on portfolio websites on the whole internet. Well, what I'm saying is that, like, I, and, and again, maybe I'm playing devil's advocate with this a little bit too much, but if somebody is able to create AI art that is extremely appealing, that people really like, it's obvious that there is a massive market for that, as we saw with the Atriox situation. And I'm sure this happens with things that are actually, like, not in SFW as well. So does this person deserve the ability to profit off of that? And it's hard for me to say the answer is no. Now she would be close to someone that creates remix songs, uh, like other remixes, uh, like others OGs. Well, I, I don't know about remix songs or not. If I've never made art, there's a reason why photographers go to great lengths to get the right angle and lighting. There's a lot of human input. I think you can make the same argument that there's a lot of human input with designing an algorithm that creates AI art as well. All I'm saying is that any time that you try to pin something down on a person like this, like any time that you look at one of these arguments and you actually get down to a granular level, I feel like the arguments are transparent and they're actually not as different as what people imagine them to be. Does that make sense? market would be overinflated in five plus years uh i don't think the photoshop market is let me see here the algorithm is protected though uh the outputs are not copyrightable that's very interesting and potentially those outputs are not copyrightable but who's to say that like I find it to be very weird that people build a foundational outlook on what AI art should and shouldn't be based off of one or two people that are in the space within like five years of it even existing in the first place in any sort of a real way. So like, yeah, you're right. that It's not like that right now. And that's not the way that exists at this current point. But I think that with a lot of other tools that people have made, like Photoshop, Sony Vegas, Final Cut Pro, et cetera, different tools that are being used to either create things or to uh, modify them, I think that because also there's a certain degree of AI art can make things like, for example, like, I, I don't know, where, where would this fall under the category for you? Uh, like, let's say you have one of the Snapchat photos or Snapchat filters, or like, I think TikTok has the same thing, where like, it takes a photo of your face and then it turns it into like an anime character. So like not all, and, and like I would say that is fundamentally probably some degree of AI art or it functions the exact same way. So I, I don't think it's as cut and dried as people make it out to be. Yeah, who, who's to say the coding isn't art? Exactly, and I think that's what the problem is whenever you start gatekeeping the word art because I think that the more that you actually d discuss what is and isn't art, somebody will say art is actually this. And then you'll give you an example of something that doesn't fall under that. That's also considered art. And they'll say, oh, well, that's different. Well, then how many differences are there to the extent to where maybe this definition is not as good as you think it is? I don't know. Uh, I, I find this to be very interesting if if it if it's not obvious already. I, I think this is extremely interesting because these are questions and things that people are going to have to figure out for the next 50 years.
Images should have no place in professional settings unless used merely as a tool, not the final result. And then generally speaking, from a moral standpoint, I think we would all be best to hold off on using any AI image generators for now until they are retrained on ethically sourced data. If the art I um I, I think that ethically sourced data is something that is very uh it's subjective. So like you have people that believe that they don't believe in copyright in the same way that people in America do. Like that's it's just that simple. They just don't believe in it. So I I I, I don't know if that really works. Our community can agree on these or some variants of these and if the mm -hmm. AI companies get regulated as they should, I think AI will be a significant tool to help us elevate our art for decades to come. We're not there yet though. There's still a lot of work to do to get there so please share this video with others who should hear this and try your best to educate others on the potential dangers. As a community we'll be able to do this. We just gotta stick together like we always have. In the future, it'll be very cool to see how we can hopefully train our own AI models with our own art only, using our own content as the entire data set for the AI to learn from. That's what I hope this deck will lead us to. That, me too. That way I can just fucking turn on the AI for my stream, talk about how great Dr. Pepper is, and I'll be asleep. You guys not even going to know the difference. But I could be dead. You have no idea. People wouldn't figure that out for like five years. This shouldn't be replaced. We should instead be supported with greater and greater tools to unlock Maybe our I full already potential am. and keep pushing art forward. New technologies are always coming out. The art industry is always growing. There will be many new careers in 10 to 20 years from now that don't even exist yet that we can't even imagine. Yeah, today. I think that's Being true. Being part of that as an artist is a much more exciting future than one where art stagnates, cursed by AI, left unchecked. And uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. Again, these are purely opinions. Don't hesitate to share your own in a civil manner down in the comments. By the way, if you've been drooling over how awesome my brush looks working on these drawings in the background, well, good news, you can get it for free as part of my full custom brush set with the link in the video description. Very epic. See you next week. Yeah, uh, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, as I said before, I mean, like, kind of, I, I don't think it's as... Uh, as simple as people make it out to be because I think that again a lot of the conversations that are happening around AI art are kind of just assuming a western worldview where the truth is that whenever a massive technological innovation like this happens it happens to everybody in the world and not just the west so just because you think that it should be illegal and you think this is the way it should be etc that doesn't really mean that that's what the rest of the world has to accommodate and agree with. So that's what I would say. I think this is a pretty good video, though. Uh, I, I, I feel like these arguments for like why AI art could be problematic are usually better than a lot of the ones that I've heard on like Twitter and, you know, Twitch and stuff like that. So I, I definitely appreciate that. And this is kind of like what I was saying before about how, you know, like watching things that you disagree with isn't necessarily hate watching right because like i you know I'm, I'm a very big fan of ai art i think it's great but i think listening to people that you disagree with and and responding to it in a in an honest way i think is a very good thing and uh it's one of the best things about the internet we've gotten a lot out of that and i think that uh it, it's been good for everybody yeah that's what i would say and uh it's a good video has pros and cons it's insightful yeah i think so People don't understand computers and how they process and infer information. Yeah, I wonder why. Maybe because they're being taught about how many different types of, uh, y you know, like what the mitochondria is inside of a cell rather than how a computer works. What are you going to spend more time with, cells or computers? It's common sense. I think that the way that people are taught things in school is ridiculous. And I'd say that most, I'd say over half of the things that people learn in high school are a waste of time. And I think it's not that they are a waste of time, but there is something that could be taught in its place that would have more relevance and validity and use for a person and enrich their life in a better way. Of course, biology matters, but does it matter more than finance? I don't think so. Especially not microbiology. Because people don't capitalize on the information they learn in high school? Well, it's because a lot of the information they learn in high school isn't capitalized on fundamentally. Yeah, or, or yeah, or algebra two or something like that.
streamer tank I, I think that it's a very common uh it's a very common opinion that students aren't taught enough about personal finance for example in school i think there's a lot of people that think that uh, i would even argue that if you were to ask if you were to poll a hundred people i would say the majority of them would probably complain that students and teachers uh, and like you're know, not students teachers but like students and like school systems are not teaching students uh like what they need to know like for the real world like i i would actually say even the majority of people would say that uh they, they, i think that's on purpose they want minimum public conduct yeah i know the, um uh, there's a lot of people that think that the reason why people aren't taught these things in school is to keep them deliberately stupid and docile yeah, I've seen a lot of things about that, and uh, I don't know if that's true or not. It's very hard to say, but it's uh, it's certainly possible. Let me read a few more of these. Economics and statistics aren't taught in high school, so the American children don't learn how hard they're getting fucked over. To be fair, I actually uh, I did learn a lot about uh, economics uh, in high school. Uh, I had a pretty good uh, economics teacher. Uh, my teacher was actually, uh, I think he was in like the CIA or something like that. And he was training to be a, uh, a spy in Soviet Russia, but then the cold war ended. So he became a high school teacher and he would go to every single student and he would wear a fucking red nose. And, and like Cody had the same teacher. He can tell you even more fucking like, apparently he just got worse and worse. Like, uh, like, we thought he was an asshole by the time Cody had the class. This guy was fucking out of control. Like, people were complaining to the principal about it. They were really mad. And so anyway, this guy, uh, he would go around with a red clown nose. And he would watch people take their exams for AP economics. This is the class that I had. I, I, show us your Dick Dylan was in the same class. I think he sat in front of me or behind me or next to me or something like that. And uh, anyway, so we were in the same class. And he would walk around. He can confirm this. He he would walk around with a red clown nose and look at the people that are messing up and he would make eye contact with them and he would stand in front of them for like three minutes while this person is like fucking panic writing their fucking economics essay or not essay but like their economics question having no idea what they're doing while the teacher and this guy was like six five or something and he's looking down at you with this fucking red clown nose like you're a complete fucking moron and then oh back in the day apparently uh this was like a year before i i had his class he used to actually give people burger king res resumes or, yeah, Burger King applications and, like, McDonald's applications with all the failing classes. Or with all the failing tests. And, uh, yeah, it was... It was really bad. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember why I even brought that up. Uh, what... Oh, my God. Why did I even bring this guy up? Oh, fuck. Oh, right, right. And so, yeah, we actually did learn a lot about economics. That's the point, yes. We did learn a lot about it, and um, by the end of that year, if you uh, even if you didn't want to, you understood supply and demand. And he fucking... People fucking hated it, but they knew it. Yeah, he would get canceled today. The thing is, he basically told somebody in Cody's class to kill themselves. If they didn't like the way he was running his, his class, everybody complained to the school... Nothing happened. Straight up, nothing happened. Nobody cared. He didn't get fired. Nobody talked to him. Nothing. And so, yeah, this guy... And, and like, again, I don't know what, what power level he's on right now. I have no idea. But, like, this is a while ago. And so, yeah, Texas be like, yeah. Well, Cody graduated a couple years after I did. So this wasn't like, you know, in the mid-2000s. It was quite a bit after that. So, uh, yeah... <laughs> He had tenure back then, whenever tenure mattered. I don't know if we had, they had that in high school, man. He told the principal the same thing. <laughs> yeah, use it. Unions make it hard to fire bad teachers. Well, this guy was an asshole for sure, but he wasn't really a bad teacher. And uh, we also had a, we also had bad teachers who stayed along for a long time too. And uh, my my biology teacher would bring a pillow to class with twenty years of head grease, uh, and he would take fishing uh, only showed movies. <laughs> yeah we had a lot of i mean like we also had uh 
I mean, in, in my school, I, 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 this is just like completely irrelevant. Like now I'm thinking back on it. We had a lot of really fucking insane teachers. Like my broadcasting teacher, whenever I was in senior year, I am like 95% sure he showed up to class high on the day of the finals. And he literally just read us out the answers. He's like, okay, so number one is going to be, and he reads the question out and he reads the A, B, C, and D. And he's like, hmm, what do you guys think? I'm thinking it's going to be D. And like for the first three questions, people are looking at each other. They're like, wait, really? And he's like, yep. And we're like, yeah, I think it's D. He's like, yeah, me too. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, is he fucking with this? Is this like a test or something like that? And we also had this other teacher. Uh, like, how many of you guys had uh, the high the, the football coach who was the history teacher? Uh, we had this, and this was like, this was for, like, th basically this was like 10th grade. And, like, I didn't want it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, like, out in the portable. And it was, like, normal history. Not AP history or pre-AP history or honors history. This was, like, normal history. So, like, you had all the people there that were, like, 19, like, 18 years old. And it was so fucking funny because I had these guys in other classes as well. And they would go and talk the most amount of shit to all of these other teachers. Like, I, they'd be like, oh, I'm just going to walk out of class. I'll give a fuck. Hey, fuck you, pussy. I do what I want. I'll be back in a minute. And, like, you know, they come back, do whatever they want. They just walk all over the teachers. But I swear to God, this dude was, like, some fucking, you know, 45-year-old Texas high school football coach. And all we did is watch videos about World War II. And all of those other guys that were these big badasses in school, every single one of them were like, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, coach, no, no coach, absolutely, yes, right now, of course, I'll put my phone down, nope, okay, sorry, I'm talking class, my apologies, sorry, sir, I won't do that, and that was it. <laughs> It was really fucking funny to see that happen because I had class with like one of them and then like we'd go to the next class and they just act fucking crazy. It was some good times. I had so much fucking fun. I never skipped school because I had more fun at school than I had it at home. And uh, not always. I mean, it depends on if a wow patch came out, but in general, that was the case. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Giga chat, whole chat, whole class gets an A+. Plus. Pretty much everybody in that class got a B. A